It's season four here at On The Path, and we're having a blast, but we're about to take this party to the next level. I invited a heavyweight. She actually, check this out. That's right, y'all. The one and only Erica Campbell, one half of the powerhouse that is Mary Mary. Y'all know Shackles. Now blazing a trail as a solo artist. We're talking four Grammy Awards, NAACP Image Awards, two American Music Awards, Stellar Awards, Dove Awards, the list goes on. And now she's blazing a trail as an actress. I sit down with the one and only Erica Campbell and we talk about her life. We talk about the rock bottom moments of her life. Life, the phone call that changed her life and what she's learned coming out of it. You do not want to miss probably the most encouraging, inspiring conversation I've had. She is a absolute powerhouse available on all podcast platforms. Stream it into the castle, watch it on Yes TV, and I will see you on the path. You're listening to On the Path podcast with Cheryl Nemhart, brought to you by Fight for Freedom. Follow Cheryl Nemhard on all social media platforms. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of On the Path. I am so excited to have you with me. As I always say, with us, we are in the classroom of life, y'all. We are learning not just from our mountaintop experiences, because that's great and good, but we learn in the valley, in the rock bottom moments of our life. It's in the trials of our lives that we are shaped and we are strengthened. And we have amazing storytellers and teachers along the way who are willing to share from the lessons of their life. And let me tell you, if we have had teachers, we have a university professor at this point. We have someone who has been through a journey of God's hand and has seen the ups and the downs. And I would consider her actually an absolute warrior. Uh, she is resilient in so many ways. And actually it was one of the first things I said to her when I had the privilege of meeting her, we bumped into each other. I won't say where, <laughs> but we bumped into each other. And I told her that her resiliency is what moved me the most. I can't wait for you to hear about our next guest. We have the one and only Erica Campbell in the building. And let me tell you about her if you don't know who she is. Uh, I would say you're living on a, a rock, but you know what? All love, you will get to know who she is here in Canada. She is a multi-award winning gospel artist. She's a speaker and a songwriter who in recent years has added actress to the list. Can't wait to talk about that. And many of you have been tracking with her since 1998 when she and her younger sister, Tina, formed the powerhouse gospel group, Mary Mary. Oh, now it's ringing some bells, I'm sure. Since 2013, Erica has gone solo and she has been blowing up the charts since then. She's been nominated and has won multiple awards, uh, including Stellar Awards, the Dove Awards. She's won four Grammys, multiple NAACP Image Awards. The list goes on two American Music Awards. And she is just getting started, y'all. But if you ask her above all these things, she'll tell you what matters most to her is that she's a loving wife and a loving mother, and she is putting family first. And that's another reason and why I love her. Would you please put your hands together for the one and only Erica Campbell? Hello, hello. Gosh, Erica, what an introduction. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Thank you for that. Uh, let me tell you, straight goods. I practiced that for years. I was like, if I ever get her on the show, we're going to go all out. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad to be here. Oh, Erica, what a joy to have you here with me. And the whole idea is that we're just, we're being real. It's real talk. It's, it's authentic. And one of the things I love about you is that you use the stories of your life to teach. I, I call people like you, people that are broken open. You can be like broken down, mm -hmm. broken up in pieces, but you break open, you, you pour out of your pain and your stuff and you use it in your songs, you use it in your teaching I would love to know, um, I would say if someone who's a world changer has a story that changed their world first, wow. tell us a little bit about, um, the life that shaped you, Erica. Hmm. The life that shaped me was, it was, it was great. It was chaotic at times, confusing at times, but there was always God. And even when it didn't feel good, I always knew that I was something. I didn't know what that something was, 
but I knew that there was something that God was doing from the lessons that I learned, things like my mom telling me my whole life, you don't go through for you. You don't go through for nothing. God is always going to use it. Um, and that's how she described all things working together for the good, not necessarily mm -hmm. always for my good, but sometimes it's for someone else's good. The lesson, mm -hmm. you know, the, the fact that God has brought you through, allowed you to learn and grow and make it on the other side. That's the testimony that someone else um, receives. Um, that's something that maturity helps you to appreciate as you get older, because, you know, when you're younger, you're still like, but I, but I, don't, still don't, I still don't know why. OK, I still don't know why I had to go through that, God. Um, but as I pay more attention to the songs that the father allows me to write, and whether it's with my sister or my husband or whomever, um, there's always mm -hmm. hope. There's always this resiliency. I, I appreciate you for using that word that tells you you've got to hang in there. You've got to get to the other side of this. You've got to see what God is doing. And I grew up in a church where that's, it was such an encouraging place. I feel like my pastor, who was also my uncle, said, you can make it every service. You can make it. You're going to be all right. God's got your back. Don't worry. Mm. You know, you're going to make it mm. through this. I heard that my whole life. So when I started facing things, I heard it. But sometimes it would take longer than I wanted it to. But I still believed it because it was so deeply rooted. And so that's how you get songs like, you know, in the morning, you'll be all right. Or even shackles or a little mm. more Jesus and all those things that don't talk about how great I am, but his ability to bring us through. And, mm. you know, whether it's having seven siblings moving a lot, being in a two-bedroom wow. apartment, but still being, wow. my family was most of the choir. Like if the Atkins family didn't show up, the <laughs> soprano section was missing. Um, so I learned dedication, despite what you're going through. You know, mm -hmm. I, I learned that stick to stick to you know what I mean? To keep yeah. going, I learned all that growing up. And so it served me well. I didn't understand what it was for, mm -hmm. but now in life I go, oh, that's why mm. that oh that's why that lesson happened mm. and so it just made me mm. appreciate it you know i wouldn't i wouldn't change any of it i really really wouldn't mm. oh my goodness and you know what that is a word that is what i've heard that so many times and i know I, I you don't hear all the wonderful things that are said about you you're just face down doing the thing that god's called you to do but resilient strong warrior and those names don't come easily I can only imagine uh, the the trial by fire being forged by fire. Mm -hmm. um, that thick skin you're saying it's legacy. It's it's what you've learned passed down to you, but also like just stuff. Yeah, stuff. Tears and going and moving and you know you have a responsibility before you, but real life is happening, and you got to do what you got to right. do. You know, I cannot right. tell you how many times. Me and Tina stopped after singing Can't Give, Give Up Now and just hugged each other on stage right there. You know what I mean? Or while singing yesterday, like real tears coming, you know? Wow. And then from there, you just go to shackles. I just want to praise you. I want my life to praise you. I want my choices to praise you and give you glory. I want what I do to glorify you, right? And sometimes that yeah. means in the trench, trenches and in the rough stuff, God works through trials. We know that to be true, even though it's uncomfortable. But when yeah. the father refines you, you are always the better for it. And you can always yeah. share that testimony. And here's what I love about God bringing you on the other side. It's so good on the good side that you don't focus on the bad side because the good is so consuming. The love is so great. The peace is so unexplainable. The joy is so full. So even though you went through mm. some tough stuff, the way God brings you out mm. just allows mm. you to smile and encourage people and let them know, man, but wait till you get here. Just keep going. Mm. Just hang on. Wait till you get to mm. this point. If you hold I, I love you that. Work. Yeah, I, I thank you for that. Thank you for encouraging us that way. And I want to talk about that good side. I want to talk about those moments that God brings you out. Mm -hmm. I, you know, when we when we look at you and we, when we look at people that we consider, um, you know, in the forefront, public eye, we always see the wins. We always see the celebrations and the accolades. And it it, it is no mistake that God's hand is clear clearly on your life, Erica, clearly just, just the favor of God. And, you know, I, I even think about the most recently, I'd wanted to just say a quick congratulations. I heard that your song, uh, feel all right. Blessed is like top 20 blazing the billboard charts. Even now, as we speak, like just 
anything you seem to put your hands to, it's very Psalm one, your life, like God's just like the wind of God Mm -hmm. is behind your back. But what I love about you, and and I'm not speaking on behalf of all of Christianity, but I feel like God can trust you with it uh, because there's this humility about you. And I wanted to ask you, I thought if I ever get you in the room, how do you navigate the tension between like celebrity mm-hmm. Christianity? How yeah. do you stay grounded and humbled in all of that? Erica? Um, again, my, my upbringing, my uncle, um, who wasn't highly educated, but was anointed mm-hmm. by God. He would say yeah. all the time, I ain't all that and you ain't either, but for the <laughs> grace of God, the story could be different. Love this it. is the grace of God. This is not the brilliant strategy and money and finance. And even though I have that, it is the hand of Jesus Christ that opens these doors. Um, and for a long time, I would say, Lord, whatever door you open for me, I'll walk through. So when you first start doing interviews, I didn't know any better. They always want to know what else you're doing. Well, when I first came out, it was just shackles. I didn't, I, I didn't, I just go to church and then we put out this song and God blessed it. So they would ask all the other things that you were doing and I didn't have anything. So my default answer was, I'll, you know, I, Whatever door God opens for me, I'll walk through. And I think God kept hearing me say that, and he started opening doors. And I knew it was no goodness of my own because I we had come from a time where we had managers and strategists yeah. and all these things. Yeah. And the things that we were trying to achieve, mm-hmm. it, it wasn't happening at all. Right. And then all of a sudden, we take our hands off and say, okay, Lord, whatever you want to do. And then it's just like thing after thing after thing. And I'm like... Wow. wow. This is what happens when we take our hands off the wheel. Right. There. And so there's no way I can walk in a room and be arrogant or act crazy or funny with anybody. First of all, I'm here because of God's grace, but because the people bought the record, because the people listened. Mm-hmm. And so I'm grateful mm-hmm. for the people. I, I just, I think it's, it's just wrong and insensitive to te- treat the very people that got you there like they're trash. So wow. Um, I appreciate people. And I remember you know, when I wanted it, I remember when I was waiting my turn and everybody wasn't always nice, you know? Yeah. Everybody didn't have encouraging things to say, you know, everybody didn't accept me or me and my sister. Wow. And so I never want to be that way. I always want to encourage people and give them something to hold on to. I don't know how many no's they've heard. I don't know how they've been discouraged or how someone has tried to minimize their gift you know, whether it is a preacher or a singer or whatever you do, I know we all go through that. So I always wonder, especially with what God has given me, this position that I'm so, so grateful for. I know if I say something, it might hold a little weight. So I'll reach yeah. out to an artist that's not with a major label. I'll reach out to an independent musician and just encourage mm-hmm. them. I'll post somebody that maybe they don't have a following. I have nothing to gain from telling right. people about you. It's literally to encourage you. And so I always want to be a good steward over all that God has given me. I never want to, I don't want to stand before the father and he go, it was never about me. You know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm serious about seeing Jesus and hearing well done. And I I don't, even if I'm at the airport and someone's rude and someone's obnoxious, I go, but you're the believer in the room. What are you going to do? What are you going to say? How are you going to respond? You know, you don't, you don't get the privilege of flying off the handling because you're supposed to have discipline and self-control, right? That's what I'm supposed to add to my faith. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, I just try to live that out because when I, I don't know if the, everybody else's Holy Ghost works like this, but when I lay down at night, if I've done something kind of off, yeah, I get yeah. that spiritual tap on my shoulder. Like, so you're going to call and apologize. You're going to repent. So I'm like, Lord, wow. I'm just going to do the right thing. I'm just going to live right, period. Treat people right. And remember that it's about you and not me. Yeah. I'm so I'm thank you for sharing that openly and you didn't have to be so vulnerable. And that's what I love about you, Erica. And I wonder, because I know you're good for it. What, what do, what are we getting wrong? What do we, what do we get wrong about the pressure that you're truly under? Cause I think we can get caught up, as you said, in all the forward facing stuff, but Mm -hmm. there's a real life, there's a real um, a trial. There's real hearts, real skin, flesh, bone. Mm-hmm. Um, talk to us a little bit about the pressure that is uh, being a Christian, uh, public, uh, forward-facing preacher, speaker, uh, actor, uh-huh. just everything. Yeah. First, I'm in the flesh just like everybody else. This hurts. This gets uncomfortable. I get nervous. My heart gets broken. I'm disappointed just like everybody else. 
Um, yeah, that's good. And you just have to keep going. You know, I've yeah. been betrayed. People that I love, you know, there's been things that have been misunderstood and I hate being misunderstood. And I used to spend mm. a lot of time trying to explain myself. Explain. No, no, no. Yeah. That's not, no, no, no. That's not what it was. Oh, no, no, no. You know, and wow. If they choose to believe something negative about you, nothing that you mm. say is going to change it. So you just keep living. That's good. And that's what you have wow. to do. You just have to. That's. Keep living. And I know we're in a time where everybody wants to vindicate themselves, but God never told me to fight my battles. He told me he would. You know what I mean? I don't have to go in a room afraid of what someone will say or do. He never told me to trust people. He told me to trust him. And so I tell people, even if I walk in a room full of devils, I got enough Holy Ghost power living on the inside of me that God will take good care of me. So I don't have to say, oh, I can't go there because they don't. My assignment might be right in the middle of the lion's den. My assignment might be in the dark place and in the valley and everybody won't understand and someone will have something to say. But if someone's life is changed, then to God be the glory. And I really want people to be encouraged. I know what it feels like to be in pain mm -hmm. and have to get up and encourage. All my songs are encouraging. All my songs are telling people everything's going to be OK. I don't I don't sing sad gospel. You know what I mean? And so. Sometimes I think it's unfair. I'm like this, this song today, I have to sing this song today. Mm -hmm. Father, this one, you know, can I wow. fight back sometimes? Can yeah. I stand up? Can I, you know, expose them on Facebook like everybody wants to do? And God says, mm -mm. So good. You can't. You're an example. <laughs> You're a life. So goodness. So I, <laughs> I have to trust him to fight those me, battles because he won't let I have me do to it. trust him to fight those. Yeah. Listen, and and while you're while you you're preaching hard, I think I'm just gonna call the choir to come right now and uh to sing nearer my God to thee. We're gonna take take up the offering. <laughs> Put me in E flat. Listen, this woman came on this show to preach the place down. I was blessed. I needed to hear that. Yeah. I needed to hear that for me. Um, you know what? I want you to continue. You're you're in a teaching vein. The last three years, I would say, for everyone, when you think pandemic mm -hmm. and racial divide yeah. and tensions and economic down, it, it has been nuts. <laughs> It has been insane. It's probably the most, it's almost at a level where people are like, Lord, are you coming? <laughs> it, it's apocalyptic almost. Yes. And, I, and I wonder, I wonder what, what are the big lessons you've been learning as you're watching and seeing all of yeah. this unfold? What's, what keeps coming up for Erica? Hmm. That God is not clueless. He's aware of what's going on. We can take ourselves back to Bible times. You know, when Jesus came, they thought, kill the Romans. That's what he came to do. And so a lot of times when we're going through, we're saying, kill the bad guy. God loves all his children. The bad guy is the devil, the That's enemy. Good. It's Satan himself yeah. who yeah. may use some people, but he's sitting in the corner mm -hmm. laughing at us as the body of Christ fights each other over who's right. We can't win the world no because we're trying to take credit for things that God, only God can do. We're trying so to legislate good. sin. So then there's certain souls we don't want to win. You know what I mean? Yeah. We're so bothered yeah. and frustrated by people's choices that we don't realize we're supposed to be extending the love of Christ. So they actually say, I want your Jesus. Mm. And so I always go, where's this reflective in the world? What's going on now? This level of chaos. Where have I seen this before? Oh, Babylon, maybe? <laughs> Right. Children of Israel, baby, right. we've seen this right. before. This is not new. It feels new. But if there's nothing new under the sun, Satan uses the same tricks. He may dress it differently, mm. may look differently. It's the same envy. It's the same anger. It's the same religiosity. Come on. Same self-righteousness. It's the same lust. You know? Yes, ma'am. It's the same strongholds. Um, I went to an yeah. a, a event over the weekend, a marriage conference, and they were talking about strongholds. And we always want to pull the strongholds down, but sometimes we need to pull the stronghold up because it's something that has a stronghold on us that we've taken ownership of. And God wants to deliver you and set you free. Okay. And you're saying, well, God, I, I have the right to hold on to this because they did this, this, this. God, I have the right to be angry with them when the scripture tells us be angry and sin not. Come on. You know, so a lot of times we justify you know, the infighting within the church or the infighting yeah. with the world and instead of trying to win them. Everything that Jesus did, it made religious people upset because it didn't make sense. You're too, you're Jesus. You can't hang around them. How can I save them? How can I win them? How can I love them? 
How can I show them mercy and grace if I'm staying away to keep my nice, clean Christianity clean? Sometimes it has to get messy. Yes. Sometimes it has to get touchy and sticky and uncomfortable because you have to get in the mess to help straighten it. Mm. You know, you can't straighten it from your nice tower sitting in your nice, pristine, clean church and sanctuary. Wow. You know what I mean? You've got to get in gotta get there in with it, them. With them. Um, goodness, Erica, I'm just I'm just so blessed by this whole conversation. And you know, I I healthily follow you in in a very safe way. We could bo- say it's borderline stalking, but I just want you to stay calm. It's fine. <laughs> I appreciate no it. It's love. No That's how I see it. It's all love. <laughs> it's all love. People, calm down. Um, but you have 3.1 million followers and and this incredible pull and platform. And I noticed that recently you launched uh, Erica's Prayers. Oh my goodness! And it got me thinking. I wondered what role prayer has played in your life and why you're so passionate about prayer? So prayer has been everything in my life. From a young girl, I remember my father um, being on his knees at 5 a.m. in the morning. So I'm stumbling up to go to the restroom as a little girl and I see daddy praying. Um, even sometimes I, you'd see a sister or two on our knees beside him praying as well. Um, it was the thread that held our family together, sometimes even loosely, um, because even with the difficulty that him and my mom had, um, we still prayed. We were still in shut-ins. Um, it was always prayer. So when I started doing the radio show, I, I wasn't the public prayer. I wasn't the one that would pray out loud. I was always kind of shy to pray. But one of the days on the radio show, I opened the show in prayer. And I said, well, if you open in prayer, you should close in prayer. And then my assistant was like, we should record these. And so we started recording them, putting them online. And... I don't know, people just start really appreciating, appreciate mm-hmm. them. And I, kept, I was going, I'm praying publicly. Like, am I really doing this? I love it. You know, I had years of practice by myself, um, but it was just a desire just to talk to the father. And I'm not, I'm, I don't consider myself super churchy. Like I don't speak Christianese, yeah. you know, great father who reigned on you. high with my, like, I don't, <laughs> you know, it's like, God, man, thank you, God. You're so cool. You're so good. <laughs> be thy thou, be thy thou. Yeah. And so I think. That the, for the person that's afraid to pray because they feel like they don't have the words, um, my simple yeah. language allows them to go, I can do that. I can pray like that. Oh, I love that. You know, and so I'm always excited about that. I still, you know, because I grew up in a churchy culture, I want to use the these and thous because I feel like that's like real prayer. You know, right. my, my prayers are just these simple prayers, like, you know, to open the show and close the show. But I've heard so many great things from people. Who said I literally learned mm. how to pray, listen to you, because I didn't have the language. I didn't know what to say. I don't know scriptures. I don't know. I don't but speak it, Christian. But it's those, yeah, so, it's but those I think all God prayers. really wants is our heart. Yeah. Yeah. He wants a yeah. real conversation from your heart. Yes. So that's what I try. Yeah. Oh, I love that. And it's, it is those simple prayers that connect and that is, and it's, it's this beautiful down to earth authenticity that you carry that, uh, that, that causes us all to connect with you and almost feel like we know you in some way, which is beautiful. Um, I know that you've been asked this next question a thousand times and I almost hesitate to ask you this because I'm going to be like the 1800th person, (laughs) but I, but I am, I'm absolutely convinced that the answer has deepened over time and has changed because of what you're going through. So I am going to ask it in this season. When you hear the word worship, what does worship mean to you now? And what would you say to anyone that's stumbling, watching this or listening that is just struggling mm. to connect to God in that way? For me, worship allows me to take my eyes off of me and put it on him. Um, worship allows me to lavish my love on the father, to get in his presence and be as broken as I need to be, as broken as I am Mm -hmm. sometimes. Mm -hmm. And he gets it, you know. Mm -hmm. He never says, go clean yourself up and then come back and worship. I can bring all my junk and lay it at the feet of the Father. And in worship, I forget that it's there, especially when you really plug in. Because a lot of times we we, we use worship as a tool. And I I think the Father understands that. I think he understands when when our hearts are crying out. Um, But sometimes it's like, whether you do it or not, I know you can. Whether it's fixed or not, I know you're capable. 
And so I'll praise you for that. I'll glorify you for that. You know, I'll exalt you for your goodness, for your creation, for making me, for sacrificing your life for me. I'll, I'll worship you for that and until I see whatever it is. I'm, I'm not here to ask you for anything. I just want to sit at your feet. I just, I just need your presence. I just need your power yeah, for me. Yeah, your Lord, I just need to so feel good. you. And it becomes so therapeutic and healing um, mm-hmm. in places of worship and empowering too. After, so we just had this prayer, praise, and testimony service at our church. And then after that, Saturday night, Sunday morning service was explosive. And I promise you, it was like Monday and Tuesday. And I felt like, okay, Jesus, okay, I need to come down now. I, I, wow. <laughs> I just felt this spiritual high like all day. Like I was telling my husband after service was over, I was like, is this what you feel after you preach? And he said, sometimes Jesus doesn't let you go. And he just holds on. And it's so sweet and so good. And so for anybody who struggles, you know, yeah. and with worship, you know what I mean? I don't know what to say. Just get in his presence and let him do what he does. There was a moment in that that Sunday service when God was moving and I kept going, yeah, because I was looking at what was happening in the room. I was watching the room transform right before my eyes. I was seeing people who I'd never seen worship or lift their hands, lift their hands and cry. And I was going, yeah, go, Jesus, do it. Do your thing in this room, Jesus. It was just it was, there I go with my street language for the father, but I mean, he gets it. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Love it. Wow. I love that. And you know, um, ha- has it ever been hard for you? I wonder in those times. So here's someone who is literally their entire ministry is to lead generations and nations of people into worship. Oh yeah. Oh, what does yeah. it look like for you when you have not been able to find that connection? It looks like this. <laughs> for those that don't see she's just standing there with her hands just straight up with the what yeah what when is it going to change i'm lifting my hands because i'm supposed to wow i don't feel a thing but in obedience to you father i will lift mm-hmm. my hands i i, I mm-hmm. feel like this is unfair what i'm going through i feel i feel like i've i've, I've been working for you my whole life everything should be and right. that's real but and that's so real i'm gonna lift my hands and I remember being in a, in a church service and I, you know, it was one of those days where, you know, my lips are pursed and turned to the left and my hands are up. And I'm like, Lord, can you just, can you just let me feel something, please? Anything but this? And I felt the father hit me from the crown of my head to the soles of my feet. I really did. And I knew in that moment that everything would be okay. And that's what I held on to. Wow. <laughs> I can't even begin to tell you how much this conversation blessed my life. I'm so thankful for Erica Campbell for taking the time to be with us on the path and sharing out of the stories and the lessons from her life. I hope that you were encouraged. I hope that you were blessed. And I'm taking this one away that before I can find joy, that before I can get to the place of joy, sometimes the first step is just remembering that God has me, that God's got this. I may not be good now, but I know that I will be. Goodness, I don't know where you are in your situation, but I pray that you grab a hold of this truth and that you know that God is in the midst of your situation. He is working it out for you. And it may not feel like it now, but know that God's got you. Well, until then, guys, keep living, keep learning, keep loving, and let's keep worshiping God through it all. I'll see you. You're listening to On the Path Podcast with Cheryl Nemhart, brought to you by Fight for Freedom. Please like, download, and subscribe. This has been an Exusia Media production.